Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. Public authority for radio and television wins the Golden Award for Sha'un Asa'a, or current affairs program at Arab Festival Awards for radio and television in Tunisia. For the third consecutive day, Israeli warplanes launched new strikes against targets in the Gaza Strip. And in Syria, 70 soldiers and fighters are killed from the government's side and its opposition at fight for control of Khan Tuman. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. The program of Sha'un Asa'a or Current Affairs won the Golden Award at Arab Festival Awards for Radio and Television in Tunisia in the category of Dialogue Programs Top List that included a number of programs in the same category. The program is presented on General and Oman Live channels with supervision of News Sector in the Public Authority for Radio and Television. Social media means interacted with the authority win of this award. The program is discussing a number of current cases at local Arab and international levels with elite guests in politics, economics and social fields. Recently, the Public Authority for Radio and Television won 14 awards. Seven of them were gold and other seven were silver at the Gulf Festival for Radio and Television in Bahrain, stressing the high level of quality of radio and television programs produced by the authority. Human possibilities and high technology in modern digital studios and the clear vision with innovative thoughts were factors enabling the authority to win a number of awards aimed Arab and international recognition and appreciation for the Sultanate's balanced and objective media experience. Israeli warplanes launched new strikes against Hamas in the Gaza Strip today, saying it came in response to motor fire as the worst cross-border violence since the 2014 war entered a third day. The Palestinian fire targeted Israeli forces searching along the border and short distances inside Gaza for infiltration tunnels leading into the southern Israel, among the most feared weapons of Hamas fighters during the 2014 conflict. Witnesses said Israeli air Aircraft attack sites at Beit Lahia in northern Gaza and near Khan Yunis in the south of the territory. It was the fourth air raid on the blockade Palestinian enclave since Wednesday, when direct clashes between Hamas and Israeli forces broke out for the first time since 2014. Yesterday, Zaina Al Amour, a 55 year old Palestinian woman, became the first fatality of the flare up after Israeli tank fire hit her home. The violence has raised concerns for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, the Islamist ruler of Gaza that has held since the 50-day war left 2,251 Palestinians and 73 Israelis dead. Syria's military denied today any involvement in airstrikes that killed at least 28 civilians in a camp for displaced people near the Turkish border. It accused rebels of targeting civilians. The United States and the European Union denounced the raid, while the United Nations' top aid officials demanded an immediate investigation. Meanwhile, a coalition of Syrian rebels seized a strategic village from pro-government forces outside the contested city of Aleppo today. Renewed fighting erupted around the village of Khan Tuman hours after opposition fighters took the position from pro-government forces. Fighter jets were launching strikes on opposition positions. At least 43 insurgents and 30 fighters on the government side have been killed in the fighting since yesterday afternoon. Commanders in Libya's third city, Misrata, rushed militiamen to a key crossroad today after it was overrun by the Daesh group in an assault in which a suicide bomber killed two police. The Abu Ghraim crossroad lies 120 kilometers south of Misrata, where the highway along Libya's Mediterranean coasts meet the main roads south into the desert interior. 
It was captured by Daesh group yesterday in an advance from their stronghold in the city of Sirte, 140 kilometers to the east. In a statement, the site intelligence group reported that Daesh group said a Tunisian fighter had blown up a vehicle at the crossroads, allowing other fighters to advance and take control of it and five other villages in the area. Still to come in our news bulletin. Greenery, water and mountains are natural components that narrate the beauty of Wadi Tiwi. نتكلم عن ادب عماني يجب ان نعطيه حقه في فتره ركود نصيب يشابه بيوت الغنم مو صدى بيبانها للطارقين التصيد في الاساس هي فكره بس كيفيه تبسيط الفكره المتلقيه ايش فيك وانت تنتظر؟ من تنتظر؟ وانا لي اكثر من عندي وانا مقضيها مصيبه القصيده الواعيه هي القصيده اللي تؤثر مباشره في الروح عطني دقيقه من يديك اقطف لك الدنيا قلب يشتاق لك ويموت فيك الشعر اللي ما عرف يلقط انظار يترك مجال الشعر يتبعونه. مهم القصيد البرنامج المهتم بكل ما يهم الشاعر والشعر في ساحتنا الشعبيه هنا في عمان. في هذا المنظر وهذا الاحساس الطبيعي والرائع والجميل للمتعه اللي انا احسها. اخذ لي صوره. موقع كثير جميل Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. North Korea kicked off its first ruling party congress for nearly 40 years today, with state media lauding the isolated country's prestige as a nuclear power, while maintaining a news blackout of the event itself. The congress drew thousands of selected delegates from across the country to Pyongyang for what, in theory at least, was the gathering of North Korea's top decision-making body. It also drew around 130 foreign journalists who were invited to cover the event but were not allowed inside the venue, restricted instead to watching from a spot 200 meters away in the light drizzle falling on the capital. And state television provided no live coverage, devoting its programming to archive material, films and patriotic concerts. Whilst forest fires continued raging in the city of Fort McMurray, 88,000 residents were evacuated and nine evacuation centers were set up in the Alberta province yesterday night. At an evacuation center in Edmond, capital of Alberta, where more than 1,000 residents fled from their homes in Fort McMurray, a couple talked about their experience. The evacuation works were carried out orderly and gas stations flood, food and water supply stations could be found every 50 kilometers along a main stretch of road from Fort McMurray. Unfortunately, a road accident occurred during evacuation which caused the deaths of two residents. According to Alberta government, there were a total of 49 separate blazes identified along, among which 35 were under control and seven were put out, but seven were still out of control. The fires have engulfed 85,000 hectares of the forest, including some regions surrounding the city Fort McMurray. A total of 1,100 firefighters were battling against the fires, with 22 fire extinguishing planes, 145 helicopters and 138 large machinery equipment. Natural components gathered to form beautiful artistic pieces in Wadi Tiwi to be one of the highlighted touristic destinations in the government of South Sarkia. Preserving architecture and agriculture in both sites of the Wadi make life there more beautiful. The village is distinguished by a peaceful atmosphere. Wadi Tiwi extends to 36 kilometers to end near the village of Mabin. The mountainous area is surrounded by greenery, palm trees, as well as a beautiful Wadi. 
The beauty of the old village and simple life reflect the old Omani traditions and customs. And now for the general weather forecast. Generally clear skies will prevail over most of the governance of the Sultanate with chances of cloud and rainfall on the Hajar Mountains. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies. Winds will be northeasterly to easterly light to moderate, occasionally active over the coastal areas, while the rest of the governance will have south easterly light to moderate winds. Seas will be moderate along the coast overlooking the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 2.25 meters and slight along the coast overlooking the Sea of Oman. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Public authority for radio and television wins the Golden Award for Shaun Asa'a, or Current Affairs Program at the Arab Festival Awards for Radio and Television in Tunisia. For the third consecutive day, Israeli warplanes launch new strikes against targets in the Gaza Strip. And in Syria, 70 soldiers and fighters are killed from the government side and its opposition at fight for control of Khan Tuman. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsrooms and the studio, it's good night. <laughs>